What is up subscribers? We are here in the RFG again today. Rob's working on some secret stuff back there you can't see right now. And Clayton is doing what we're gonna be doing today. Putting the rods and pistons in the uh, 5.3 that we've been building in our series, how to build an LS engine. The series has been pretty fun so far, right? How to build an LS? Or how, we how we would build. build. And maybe cheap should be also inserted in there. The comments are good. We're enjoying the feedback. I mean, we'd be doing this anyway, so we thought we'd just show you. Yes, Clayton's first LS. Let's talk about some rods, pistons, ring gap, and all that business. Ready? So we went ahead and put in the four pistons on that side already. Now we got this side of the block to do, which we're gonna do with you guys. Thought we'd just get our procedure down, down. down pat. Before we showed you guys. Clayton just went ahead and put all the bearings into the rods and now he's putting some assembly lube on there just like the crankshaft when you're dealing with bearings it's best to use the assembly lube especially with an engine like this that's going to be sitting a while before it gets cranked as it uh, tends to stay in the bearing a lot better so for that first start up there's good oiling and lubrication. Mm -hmm. The trailer park boys goblet going on filled with oil. Just gonna put a bit of oil on the wrist pin oil on the rings, oil on the skirt. Skirt. First and second ring, I just clocked the opening one at 270 and the other one at 90. Basically, you don't want them lining up is the big thing. They spin once they're in there. Yeah, they move around. Move so it is kind of what it is, but. Using this uh, um, handy dandy. Uh, sir. Yeah. We're making these airs just to, you know, keep you guys on your toes, the dot. On oh, an LS see? engine, pistons, there's a dot. check the other side, Mike. No, I already checked it, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a dot that uh, points towards the front of the motor. That's uh, how you know which way to orientate them. I'll just give that a tap. I made that at work. Okay, so I'm just going to tap her down. You want to make sure to guide the big end of the rod onto the crank while you're doing this so it doesn't score the crank coming down the wrong way. There we go. Just oiled up the rod bolts. Uh, is that the right side? Yeah. All right, so I briefly mentioned the Gen 4 and Gen 3 rod thing in the previous engine building episode. The Gen 4 rods are the ones you want. They're stronger. I can show you the differences once we uh, go up to the attic there and grab a Gen 3 rod. But as far as what you're gonna find them in, all 05 and newer truck engines should have them. Uh, it's always best to do a visual inspection because the Sonic Stang engine sold to me as an 05 did not have them, whether it is an 05 or not, I guess that's debatable. But some late 04s also had them. Six liters as early as 02 started to have Gen 4 rods and all of 2003 and up six liters. So they got them a little earlier. Besides the actual width of the rod and how fat and beefy it is to tell the difference, you can look at the big end. Uh, the Gen 4 rods, they're squared 90 on both sides, kind of like this. The Gen 3 rod, I'll show you when we pull it down, it uh, has a curved edge on one side. So that's one easy way from the bottom with the uh, windage tray off to tell them apart. The other difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4 rods are the wrist pins. The Gen 3 rods came with pressed in wrist pins and some of the Gen 4 rods came with pressed pins but by 05 once they started doing them in all the vehicles they uh, had floating pins in them as this piston does. You can tell the difference. There's a little ring in there holding in the wrist pin if you can see. A press pin uh, is, as it sounds, pressed in there. So here's a dirty Gen 3 rod that came out of the Shit Horse's 6 liter for comparison. You can see from this angle, the uh, Gen 4 rod here on the left, just a lot thicker. And then from this angle as well, quite a bit beefier in general. And then even on the end on the caps, this is what I was talking about earlier. This one has this, like that, whereas the Gen 4 are all squared off on the ends. And that's really the best way to tell. But I mean, once you've seen these a few times, you can pretty much tell the difference by looking just at the rod itself. You can see the different style of wrist pin here, like I mentioned earlier, the press pin. 
Not as good of a design as the floating pin. The floating pin is what you want. I think it relieves a little bit of friction. Rod bolts are a pretty common upgrade on a race engine when you're planning on making some high horsepower. But with these LS rods, they say the rod is likely to fail before the bolt does. So getting an ARP bolt or something is up to you, but it seems a little pointless. What are we gonna torque with today? Yeah, I don't know. Do I pull bendy out again or do I use uh, a click style? I put it together, I should pick what torque instrument to use. Torque sure. In torque implement. All right, so the ring package. This is something that'll be pretty similar on any internal combustion engine. On this piston, there are two compression rings and an oil ring. The oil ring is made up of this center ring you can see here and then there's two kind of retaining rings on the top and bottom these two top compression rings are just a single ring with boosted applications ring gap is something you're going to want to pay attention to if you leave it too tight there's a possibility that the ring will actually butt together and bad things will happen take off the top of a piston or what else would happen really catastrophically there well, that is Blow the whole pit. Yeah, that's pretty catastrophic taking the top off the piston. It'll unleash some shit flying around in there, basically. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> However, if you file them too large, you'll have blow by, but that's kind of preferable to shit flying around in there, right? We ended up going with 26 thousandths on the top ring and 28 thousandths on the second compression ring. Lots of opinions about this matter on the internet. You also do your own research, decide what you want to do. There are some formulas for doing this. The uh, ring kit actually came with a formula that based on your cylinder size, you can calculate what they should be at, depending on your engine application. If it's not square, it'll either hit the side of the crank or the other rod, so you gotta be careful. If you guys haven't seen one before, this is a ring filer. You put the ring in here. Push it kind of with your hand like that, kind of like the uh, Winnebago Man No More sign, and uh, grind her up. The Winnebago Man No More, what? No More! We've definitely shown it in previous videos, but once you file the ring, you put it back in the cylinder and measure with some feeler gauges until you get your desired ring gap. And you want to keep your ring <coughs> square to the deck, so if you just used a, use a piston upside down, with the ring on it, it sets it square down the deck. It's pretty obvious what the piston rings do, but basically they seal the combustion chamber. They create vacuum in a naturally aspirated engine, but in boosted engines like this, the pressure from the turbo will actually fill the cylinder, so it's kind of less important on the intake stroke how well they seal, and more so on the compression stroke. So there's different ring kits you can get. Depending on your application, we just went with a standard rebuild ring kit. The oil's cold. Very uncomfortable. No one likes cold lube on their parts. Dot forward. Secondary ring gap there. Top there. Down the hole. This piston that came out of the six liter is pretty filthy, but believe it or not, the ones that came out of this engine were even dirtier before we cleaned them. And how I cleaned them was uh, basically like this on all the parts of the rod. The piston itself I cleaned with uh, the same brush as well on the top, on the sides, obviously with the rings removed. Uh, once you have the rings removed, you can see in this piston as well, there's a whole bunch of crud in those ring grooves. So. Ideally, you want to get all of that out of there so the ring can fit and rotate in the cylinder properly. Me and Clayton found using a pick like this for the really tough stuff to get out of there. And then an old piece of a ring cut off like this, you can use also to scrape in there. And then we use some 180 grit sandpaper to clean it up some more in there. I'm sure lots of sloppy builders would not go to the lengths we did cleaning those, but I mean, you're here, we got time. Might as well make it the best we can. But this is a used junkyard LS, so you know. So you know. Now that we got all the pistons and rods in the engine, Clayton is going through and torquing them down. We ended up going with 15 foot-pounds to start on the first pass on all the bolts. You want to make sure you're torquing them evenly as you're doing it. 
And then after the 15 foot-pound torque, we're going up to 45 foot-pounds. The official GM method to do this is actually to use the degree wheel thing that uh, we should have used on the main caps as well. But setting everything to just a torque value is kind of easier. Clayton's leading this build, so you know what he wants to do. We're using his fancy wrench, as you guys can see here. For those that uh, like the other guy, here's Bendy. I didn't. Oh, look really at that. Didn't. That could have been some disaster. You always want to go over and make sure you got all the bolts because, you know, that's another thing where bad things would happen and shit would be flying all over the place. So you better cut myself. So. That's why you always double check. Once you have them all torqued down, you're going to want to make sure they have a little bit of end play. As long as you can wiggle it, it's good. Well, in this case, yeah. I mean, these are the parts that came out of it, so nothing changed. Unlike the older Chevys and Fords, the Fillet radius on the crankshaft was large so that there was a bevel on the rod and a bevel on the bearing. So you always knew which one was facing which way, but these LS rods are like symmetrical. Since we're using all the stock parts that came out of this, it's pretty simple. We didn't even use, you know, plastic gauge to check uh, bearing clearance on the rods. Not that we would anyway. Well, I would have. I actually brought my mic and I was, I, I don't have a a bore gauge that size at home, but I can use a telescopic gauge and a mic. Mic's right there. It's past the uh, the approval process. Check marked by it's Rob. Quality control. Yeah, quality control. Master build. This is the master build of the SPP. Master junkyard. Master beater. Build. I mean, if this was all <coughs> nice new parts, fancy parts, we'd be taking a few more steps. And if this was fancy new parts, again, uh, we'd have to do a little more research. Uh, your piston is kind of an important thing. The deck height, figuring out the length of the rod, all that comes into play depending what heads you want to use. There's a whole bunch of math and equations that go into doing that if you're doing a completely custom build, especially with parts from different manufacturers. You never know exactly how it's all going to fit until you put it together and measure it. But luckily working on these junkyard LS engines, that's not really a consideration. If you don't have access to custom parts like this, the alternative is usually something like this to get the pistons in with the rings. It's a real pain in the ass. You can find them at any parts store. It's the cheapest option. Other than that, you can buy these things from Summit for all the different sizes you might need to build your engine. Here's another one Rob has, a different design. Put that around there, squeeze it. And then you have all different size bands for that yeah, thing, right? Yeah, depending yeah. on the bore size. Well, obviously this is a, this is for uh, Clayton's Honda probably. Yeah, maybe. Lawn more. Of course, the ultimate test to make sure you've got it all right is to spin the motor over. Different ring packages will produce different amounts of friction you'll feel while spinning it over, but it should be fairly easy and there shouldn't be any tough, rough spots. Tough, rough. Tough, rough. Rough, rough. This L33 5.3 comes with flat top pistons. These junkyard LSs come with a few different types, some dished, the 4 eighths you'll often see with a dished piston. The shape of the top of the piston combined with the length of the rod determines your compression ratio, combined with the chamber on the cylinder head. Less room as the piston comes up and meets the cylinder, well hopefully it doesn't meet the cylinder head. As the piston comes up, if there's less room in there, you're gonna have a higher compression ratio. That's pretty simple to understand, I think. All these LS engines, Gen 3 and Gen 4 rods, have a cracked rod design. Pretty sure we covered this in a previous video, but since we're talking about rods and pistons, uh, the cracked rod design basically means they break it off in the factory like that. And that's how all the LS motors will be. So they kind of only go together one way. You just put it on backwards though. No, but it fit yeah, right. you can see that it, it goes together, but, but there's the, huge spaces. It all depends on the... Some rods are really bad. See there, when you put it together, you can't almost see the crack Yeah. when it's put together the right way. But sometimes they're really obvious that they won't fit together. So that's gonna be about it for this episode. We got the pistons and rods in there. No, uh, <laughs> no hassles, no problems. Nice and smooth like it should be this time. Just wait till it starts and then say that. Hope you guys are enjoying the series, maybe learning something or at least getting a laugh out of us fucking up stuff. And I'm getting a laugh over you explaining the mechanics of an engine. It's good, it's great. I'm I didn't trying. Know, I didn't know I'm half this shit before. I tried to prepare a little more for this <laughs> one and I will for the next one as well, which you will see coming up very soon on the channel. So as always, like, share, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys later.